Welcome to our first episode of The Owl's Nest. Today we have Cassie H.P. and she's going to be reading a poem. A hug, not a kiss. A dream told me when the universe was made, I wanted to kiss it. But instead the universe wanted a hug and that's when sadness grew in my heart. It sounds true. It sounds like the universe rejected me. I want to kiss the wounds of the earth. I want to kiss the imperfect world that started underneath my father's house with deformed kittens huddled together in the darkness. Some were missing a leg, an ear, an eye, a tail. My mother pulled their tiny bodies out one by one. I kissed them in my arms till my father took them away. I hugged the kittens goodbye. I wanted to wake up each morning and kiss the missing eye, kiss the missing hind leg, the missing ear, and the tail. But the universe wanted a hug, not a kiss. A dream told me. So welcome to the Owl's Nest. Today we have Cassie HP who does poetry. She also does um, art and music. And we're gonna be asking her a few questions. And thank you for joining us. So you brought some art pieces. Let's mm -hmm. see what, what you have. Do you wanna go over this one first? Yeah, so I brought um, two old school ones um, that I did when I was a teenager. And so, yeah, you can see them. But um, to go even further back, when I was a kid, I used to get stuff from outside, flowers, leaves, and I would crumple them, and then I would glue them back together. And so, like, I didn't know I was doing collage, but I just, I always found that fascinating. Oh, that's pretty cool. So yeah. would you ever, um, I see where some people also um, get like plants and put them in a book. Yeah, I would do that too. Yeah? But as I got mm -hmm. older, so when I was little, I would just like get dirt and rocks and I would just glue them on, on paper, on uh -huh. lined paper. And then um, as a teenager, I transitioned from that to magazine cutouts like these. Mm -hmm. So I would just um, pick pictures that I really liked and intrigued me and I would cut them out and glue them together. So, so the magazines you get it from, are they like random or? Yeah, I would just like ask people if they had magazines they didn't want. And, um, and like my grandmother had like the living home magazines. So mm -hmm. I would just cut, cut those out. And, and so I just did that for a really long time, like paper on paper and just glue it. And then um, my late 20s, I realized I could do this on like a canvas. So then I would paint the canvas and then I would, you know, um, glue like the, the magazine cutouts there. So I did that for a long time. So I transitioned from paper to canvas. And so now what I'm doing is this type. Mm -hmm. um, so what I do is I go to Savers and I get, um, picture frames that you know or have our oh so you do second hand shopping like, <laughs> yeah uh, i love okay. it now and then mm -hmm. so i paint over it like this and then i collage and so i've been doing that lately um cool so it's kind of like upcycling kind of like yeah mm -hmm. so it's super cool um my transition from where i started when i was little till now okay mm -hmm. that's pretty cool so yeah. i kind of want to get into this one okay okay so like what, what goes into when you're first trying to like create a piece like this? So for me, I just, I feel like I have an eye for where I want things and, and I love these types of pictures. And so I, I always get lucky. It's kind of luck, you know, if you have the right magazine and you find things that you really like, you just gotta see where they all fit. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's just so random, you know, like I never really know what I'm going to do until, until it's done. And then I take a step back and look at it. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and if, there's a story. If you had mm -hmm. to say, like, what kind of vibe it gives off, because mm -hmm. to me, I do feel like there's kind of like a, a rocker, kind of like more vibe to it. Yeah, I mean, that's my teenage years, so mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, definitely, but also like, yeah, what was going on my teenage years, like, you kind of, you're lost, you're kind of finding yourself, and, you know, it says right here, clean up your mess, mm -hmm. and so it's just like a mess, you know, and... I remember those and, days. Like, confusion, <laughs> right? Yeah. Confusion, mm -hmm. a mess, and, <laughs> and so, you know, a lot of my collaging, I, I didn't know what they meant, but, you know, I started going to therapy early, mm -hmm. early on. It, when I was like 14, 15, and my therapist like knew how to interpret art. And so I would bring her my collages and she would interpret them and I'd be like, like, where'd you get that from, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so did you ever feel like she was like, uh, your therapist was right or wrong? It, it was like odd because a lot of them like explored my sexuality and I was like, how do you get this like you know what I mean yeah, like this true. one no but there there's like other ones where it should be like you know what I mean this is this this and I was like what are you talking about <laughs> but, well, so, so did you feel they're a little bit off sometimes or well no? back then yeah but then I realized oh yeah you know I think so mm -hmm. yeah, so what's sure. one thing they would kind of tell you like like um she said that I was very good at projecting how I felt without realizing it so I'm very expressive and, oh, okay. and, um, and she said, you know, I like to cut things up and put them together. It's like deconstructing to reconstruct. And that's, I feel like that's my life. Like, that's what I do. That's very interesting. Cause yeah, thinking back on how mm -hmm. you would go out there, find pieces of nature, destroy it and then put it back together. Yeah. Cause I think that's how I, I felt and still feel about my life that I'm trying to reconstruct the broken parts and make it beautiful you mm -hmm. know no definitely and like give it a new a new story mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for some reason that reminds me of um have you ever heard when um in the japanese culture when they break like a pot yeah and they, they use glue it with the gold, gold right yeah. to kind of show like um mm -hmm. to try not to hide the imperfections but Right. You know, kind of more beautify it yeah for sure That's i've heard people tell me that about my art that they mm -hmm. see that in it no that's really cool mm -hmm. and then so okay so if we compare like these two yeah to so each the, other yeah so, this what, is what, a later one so mm -hmm. oh, okay so like what is the message that you're trying to convey in this one or that one because i remember mm -hmm. a, a, like it kind of sounded like a little bit earlier when you were talking about it that you just kind of like Put it together kind of like with yeah. no thought but does it like mm -hmm. does a story come out of it during that process so i think as i matured and got older like you can tell right it's just like so chaotic i just kind of glued stuff there's an underlining story but like this was so long ago i honestly like don't remember but but as you can see like this one's more structured you know what I mean? Like there is a story. Mm -hmm. Like this one, I was in so much grief at the time. Like I, I remember this one. I don't remember, mm -hmm. and so it gives me clues that I think I was just trying to experiment and like find my way through mm -hmm. mess. So how old did you say when you made this one? I was probably oh, 15, 16. See, that's really interesting to me. So, mm -hmm. cause like, do you have all your pieces of art? Pretty much, like all wow. of these, I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I went through this terrible phase where, like, I would throw away a lot of my art. Oh no! When I was younger. Yeah. But you have ac it actually collected and everything. Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah. So so. So this one is mm -hmm. like mid twenties, I would say. And then, so what was the the message and the story? Because there's actually like, writing. Yeah. So. Oh, this is a big part of my past. Um, so I was um, a Christian for 12 years. Mm -hmm. and Emphasis on the was? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, and I experienced like a lot of grief in that religion, a lot of suppression and 
Um, I really suppressed a lot of things because, you know, I felt there was something wrong with me, that um, there was sin inside of me, and, you know, in order to love Jesus, you have to, like, overcome that and keep suffering and suffering and to, to like, show your devotion, right? And so this is, like, the story of this one. I was just in a lot of grief that I couldn't get rid of the sin, like inside of me, mm -hmm. the demons inside of me. And And you said, what, so what religion was it? A, just Christian, just like Christian a, a non-denominational. Mm -hmm. um, but I left all of that um, a couple of years ago. So I'm free from that stuff. Okay, and, um, but how was that experience from, you yeah. know, going? Because I would imagine there's probably a lot of hardships you have to go through with your family to like be like, hey, I don't believe in the same stuff that you Oh yeah, me right to. now, yeah, like my mom um, can't believe that I walked away from from that. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, I I chose to join this religion at twenty two. I wasn't born into it, so mm -hmm. I know what I was like before. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. I, I had like an idea of who I was and then I joined this religion and so I really like screwed myself up by doing that and I lost like 12 years of who I was and so now I'm in a place where I'm getting back to that girl before she was a Christian mm -hmm. you know what I mean and like I feel like I'm picking picking up where I left off mm. almost so, so what was it that like Christianity made you feel so like disattached or, um, or like if something was wrong with you that that idea of just the yeah sin? so that's where my therapist words came in like we are like sexual beings we we do express ourselves in different ways and that's a large part of who i am and in christianity you can't express that through the way you dress through like tattoos how, mm. how you talk you know i'm very expressive and during those 12 years i was like suppressing it and it just mm -hmm. got worse right and i just felt yeah. like shit all the time so i guessing those tattoos were after well were i actually before? got tattoos i was like a oh, radical no. christian but they were mm -hmm. christian tattoos so a lot of these are cover-ups actually it's like oh, i don't yeah. want these religious tattoos anymore you know because i was trying to prove like like look like i'm super christian and i love jesus and here's my jesus tattoos you know and, mm -hmm. and so when i got out of that i like covered them up and so I, which ones are cover-ups so i'm guessing the, that maybe the coffin one no hold on. so is i have it, a big one right here what is it of um so so like before it was a cross with a lamb and like the clouds it was like it was very badly done and so um there's still a lamb there like i've always loved lambs since i was little so it's kind of funny like i still kept the symbolism mm -hmm. but it's not of suppression anymore oh, okay so like it transformed into something different and then that's kind of cool how you evolved yeah. that's why i was guessing the coffin one i was like was there is there jesus in the coffin? no <laughs> well, the, i mean the coffin one is me coming out of my death you know mm -hmm. they say that like religion is life. life and finding jesus is life but it's actually death <laughs> to, me. to you yeah yeah I, and i'm kind of like in the same lines of how i feel with religion so yeah. i kind of i would agree with that i don't yeah. think it's for everybody right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then so like you've been mentioning that um you you went to therapy what was it that made you feel like hey i need to you know yeah feel like i need to go see a therapist so um when i was 14 i just remember like being in the dark all the time in my room and crying and you know I was also in a really like um, chaotic relationship at 14 mm -hmm. and that really affected me and so one day I went up to my mom and I said I think there's something wrong with me can you get me help or a therapist like 14 I said that to my yeah. mom my mom was in her own little world that she didn't even like realize I mm -hmm. think I was in such a dark place but I've always kind of like known myself and been really in tune with mm -hmm. my feelings. And so at 14, I told her no, that. Oh, yeah, that's that's great that you're able to recognize that. Yeah, like, it was hey. really scary. And I just, I wanted to die. And, you know, as dumb as it sounds, this relationship like meant a lot to me. Um, but it was like, it, it was 
so chaotic. Like at 14, no one should be in a a relationship like that, you know. And it was my first one, mm-hmm. and so. So what was so chaotic about the relationship? Um. So the person I was with, like, would disappear like weeks at a time, and I would like go look for him, and so that created an, an anxiety in me, like separation anxiety and stuff and Mm -hmm. and he would come back as of nothing so like i never knew if we were together or broken up and so when he would come back i would be like really happy and excited like oh okay we're back and you know it would be great and then he'd like take off again and so this happened for many years and this created like this weird thing in me like i romanticized that so when he would come back, I'd be like, oh, this time, like, he's going to stay and he's come back for me because we're meant to be. And then when he would leave, like, it became like a sickness that mm. I liked. You yeah. Know? Um, so I, it could be a really bad pattern you get into. It was a bad pattern that mm-hmm. lasted for 20 years. Wow. On and off. And so so, <laughs> so I'm wondering, what, what was the final straw that made you think, like, I need to end this or? Um... Well, it was, yeah, last year I I came face to face with him and I I just, you know, I asked him if we could just be together and stop doing this pattern, you know, and and I got my answer. He said no. And Mm -hmm. so I realized I have to stop, you know, like this has been going going on a really long time Mm -hmm. and I think it's time to, you know what I mean? I realized that after all these years, he still said no. Like, I have to walk away from yeah. it. And then how do you feel now that you've... Yeah, like, um, I mean, 20 years of that, it's not going to go away in a heartbeat. And mm-hmm. so I am I still deal with it, but, like, step by step. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, so, since you're an artist, poet, musician, how did that relationship affect your, your artwork? Well, man, it... I mean it shaped me really and it's funny you ask this because one of the poems i'm going to read is is about that it's kind of like my last poem that i've written about this person but when i was younger like all of my poems were about this emptiness that i felt you know like it was so um intense this relationship that it fueled a pain in me that that i started to enjoy you know Mm. and so now I take that pain and, and other pains that I've had in my life and I turn that into art. And so like walking away from this relationship, I would always be like, why me? Like, why, why did this person pick me to fuck with? You know? Mm. And, and so I realized. Like, Cause I feel this one's kind of, does this one kind of express that? Like what you're saying right now? This like, one expresses my time in church, the, the, oh, the what whole. I was talking about, but mm-hmm. also, yeah, like, so you're like, you're going with that whole thing with your relationship and the church. At the yes. Same time? It's, it's oh. tied because I, I converted to Christianity cause I thought it was going to save me from this person. So mm-hmm. this person drove me to join a religion to hide in like i thought that if i was in church doing the will of god and and like um being like active that that god was just gonna heal me and i was gonna forget him and it actually got worse like i even like snuck around and saw him when i was a christian Mm -hmm. you know on and off and so so it's it's related and it's just so interesting that that when I left Christianity that's when I faced him Mm. so so you just took on the whole world yeah so like when I left Christianity it's like I came full circle and I confronted finally like this relationship because I think I've been running from it you know the pain of it yeah definitely Mm -hmm. How, how, how did you build that momentum to finally be like, I need to start standing up for myself, like against the religion, against um, when? You know, that, well, yeah, that like I said, um, so that so I I was married for four years, and the end of of my relationship, my ex and I just kind of like 
do you still want to go to church? And he's like, no. And so that's when we, we call it our kitchen table talks because mm -hmm. we would have deep conversations about like religion and how fucked up it is and about our own church. And I would even talk about my ex, you know what I mean? Like I was very open with him about it. Mm -hmm. And he was the one that even told me like when we were married, I, I screwed around and mm -hmm. that was my pattern. I, I have done that with all of my relationships and I knew that that was like a problem, mm -hmm. like a really bad problem. And so I did it with him and I told him right away and he said, you should go back and ask him like if he wants to be with you. And so like my ex really, that's like the ultimate love that he would do that. You know, because I, I think I needed somebody to just tell me that, you yeah. know, because I, like, it was an impulse, you know, like, I am not a person to do that. And so it's very impulsive, mm. you know, like this, I have to stay away from this person. Like, I am very intentional that if I know where he's going to be at, I'm not going to be there. Mm. And so I'm intentional now about that because... There's something about him, like if I see him, it's it's over. So I have to be very careful. Mm. But like that's the maturity and the growth that I've come to, yeah, to you know, mm -hmm. to the acknowledge, to yeah. Mm. Um. So anyway, so it was yeah. My ex husband really helped. We helped each other during that time, and we decided, you know, it, it was also because of the church we, we got married. We thought that was the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't, you know, like I expected like churchy things from him and he, he couldn't, like he couldn't provide that. And so like, see what I mean? Like a lot of those 12 years were based on like such falsehood and, mm -hmm. and expectations that I put on myself and others. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very interesting. Yeah. So so we went from a little bit, I like how it kind of like lines up like this is your past, a little bit more closer to the present. Yeah. Is this more present time? This, yeah, yeah, this so is this, from Barry's Ghosts. Really cool. yeah, yeah, so so let's talk about this piece. What's what's the message that you're you're conveying? Yeah, so so with Bearing Ghosts and anybody who saw it, it knew it was a, it was an interactive space that I created at Orange Brick. And uh, it was a room, and I transformed it into my old bedroom where I would do this mm -hmm. and this. And it was a way for me to say goodbye. Like, I wanted to recreate the feeling, the experience to say goodbye to it. Mm -hmm. And I did this because I started taking medication for depression and chronic pain. And when I started taking it, like, I for the first time felt content. I was like, this is what it feels like to be okay for once. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was ready to bury like a sadness that people put on me. You know, like I have my own sadness that I own up to. And then I have another sadness that people gave to me that wasn't mine. Mm -hmm. And so I felt ready to like bury that. And so that's why I created. Is it like the expectations people have of you, or how it's hard? Their things? sadness. So I'm an oh, empath, and yeah. so I feel like if somebody's like, "I'm having a terrible day," you're like, "Tell me." It about was it. even. Let me know. It was like, even like more serious than that. It was like my mother's sadness, my brother's sadness. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just oh, I'm having a bad day. It was like my family putting their grief and sadness on me, mm -hmm. and like I carried it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, I know some people talk about, like, um damaged families mm -hmm. and, like, how they get, like, they kind of describe them as, like, generational curses mm -hmm. or ancestral curses or something like that. Yeah. So was that something that was kind of, it was kind of like that? Like So, like, as a Christian, that's what they call the generational curses. And they say, like, it, it like, you have, you have to break it. And it was a burden that I put on myself. And... Even though I'm, like, out of Christianity, there's still some truth to that. Like, it's not it's not a Christian thing anymore. It's just, like, a duty of mine that I feel that I want to heal, like, my past and myself for my daughter. I have a four-year-old. And for her and for myself, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, to heal all of this stuff. And so the room, like, I buried my soul into that room. I yeah. recreated my room mm -hmm. and I even brought in like furniture from 
from my old room. So a lot of the things that people saw. Yeah, I remember there when I was reading were, there that you try to make it look very similar. It right? was like mm -hmm. like my proudest moment in that exhibition was my mom. She said, "Wow, like it looks just like your room," mm -hmm. you know. And, and I I did it. I was like, I fucking did it. Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> it was like almost scary for, for me. Um, <laughs> Cause I didn't really know you at the time. I just yeah. knew you did poetry, and you know, yeah. I've I've I heard you um do some of it at, through the Looking Glass, I believe. And then um so I when I went to that room, it was a really cool experience. Cause I think as like for somebody that also kind of like went through their stuff, yeah. you go in and you start thinking about like, damn, I do need to start healing from my past as mm -hmm. well. And it's kind of cool that you're going through that, but it seems like not like the way you decided to express it mm -hmm. allows other people to do the same yeah thank you so much mm -hmm. a lot of people said that that they were very like moved and some people who haven't cried like in a long time said they were in tears and people who read through my journal like really like i really did something in that space i created you know like something very important Mm -hmm. that a lot of people were impacted by yeah i think it is important because yeah a lot of people need to heal <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know for sure um for sure and um so this is one of the pieces that i created and it, it's actually after the so the journal was the first thing that i did and after i did the journal i did this because a lot of the room was based on my memories and like your memories are so it's like so intense our brain how you know they keep memories of of like smells and taste and like i can walk into a room and if i smell a certain smell and it reminds me of something i'll take like it'll take me back mm -hmm. and so this is like you know the brain and the faucet and it's just like leaking right and I feel like in order to heal it's like you have to open up that faucet and let it like out and when it comes out though it's like you know what i mean like a flood mm -hmm. and a dam breaking and i i don't think i realized what i did i think the universe is like okay you want to bury your ghost are you serious okay and <laughs> and that's what happened like that's exactly what happened to me when i did that i just i let it all go and and I felt like I really did. I, I put in the work, like, not only artistically, but emotionally, mentally, like, physically. You know, I even got um, rocks from my childhood a home. The wall, like, caved in. And I got those, the pieces from it. And that's what I made the grave out of. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I buried myself with my childhood home. So everything in the room was significant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's pretty cool yeah does, does this name have a piece i mean does the piece have a name <laughs> um what did i name it i think leaking brain mm. Mm -hmm. and then is it for sale uh yeah if anyone's interested how much yeah. does this piece go for uh 150 150 yeah okay we'll make sure to add that <laughs> yeah um and so i brought this one to to talk about burying ghosts, but also to show how I transitioned. So now I'm doing things like this, um, and I really enjoy it. To yeah. me, it's that it's really cool, you know, to see the evolution. Yeah, of, like, I through. wish I had pieces from when I would like glue, you know, leaves and stuff, but I don't have those. But people can imagine how it looked like. You know, mm -hmm. it's all cute. <laughs> I, I have one more question about your. Um, that show you did the the journal mm -hmm. how did you feel writing that like oh well i mean poetry has been part of me since i could write mm -hmm. and so it felt really good to make a journal based off of the theme of the room and i was really intentional i started with the journal first so i could have an idea of the pieces i wanted to do and the journal's like a little like map book so if you really read through it you, you would see little clues, like, you know what I mean? Um, for example, I, there's a letter to my dad in the journal, and one of the pieces was a tree one. Do you remember? The, it was the biggest one as you walked in. Mm -hmm. It was a tree, and if you read the letter, you'd know that my dad built that canvas. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool how everything got 
intertwined yeah. you know what i mean mm -hmm. it reminds me of something that that would probably would have been like at like a meow wolf or something like that yeah i went to meow wolf to get a feel for it and mm -hmm. some of the stuff i was already gonna do was at meow wolf and that wow. it was just confirmation to do it yeah that's yeah. what i was gonna say like that's yeah, the sign like the, right the journal i already wanted to do a journal and like at meow wolf there's a journal in the bed the parents bedroom I was like, oh shit, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I did it. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, how huh? when I sometimes have an idea of something, there's usually somebody who's done something similar to it yeah, already. Yeah, that always happens to me, and it's like a sign to do it. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, just go full steam ahead? Yeah. <laughs> For joining us, we're going to take a quick break from the podcast, and we're going to have another poetry reading. The gift. When you were in prison... You carved a lamb out of soap for me. What did you think about as you dug into the wax, shaping and forming the body, stripping away the unwanted wool? What tool did you use, unclean and rusted? What did you trade it for, a pack of cigarettes? Or maybe you sculpted it with your bare hands. What the soap with your snake saliva, taking your time as you thought about the shape of my body, the hole you left inside of me, a life sentence of suffering. Or maybe you did it dry and fast, with callous hands, with no thought of the pain as farmers do when they violently throw lambs into metal bins and cut off their tails. You are not kind or gentle. You dug into me so deeply. You kicked me from under my feet and shaped me violently dry. With force, you stripped away my girlhood with years and years of time. When you finally finished carving and tossing the unwanted parts, the gift turned out to be beautiful. So what got you into your um, writing poetry and like deciding this is the path you want to like express yourself? Yeah. So I remember like in elementary school, um, we had an assignment to do poetry and I was like, I don't know what poetry is when you're in elementary school. And, and it so happened that like I wrote it very well and I did illustrations to go with it. Mm -hmm. And I remember the feeling when I did that, like this is what I want to do. I think it's always interesting like when we look back at our childhood, mm -hmm. we have those like imprinting moments it was kinda... so early on, mm -hmm. you know, I think that I was like born to do it. It was just in my DNA. Mm -hmm. So after, you know, I wrote that poem, I just kept going. And then when I was like 12, I was reading like Shakespeare and, and Emily Dickinson and all those people. And I, I didn't know like that they were so famous until mm -hmm. I got to high school. And then we started reading them, and I was like, wait a minute, I read these already. So I was already reading those poets. And, like, so you do a funny? lot of reading? Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I, I, I'm imagining you had a really high reading level <laughs> at a young age, you know what I mean? I did, yeah. Because I was the opposite, I just watched TV. Oh, but, um, yeah. But no, that's I mean, really don't good. get me wrong, I mean, I watch TV too, but mm -hmm. I balanced everything well, I was definitely out. not reading Shakespeare at that age. <laughs> yeah, I was reading, like, Romeo and Juliet. Like, that's uh -huh. my favorite one. That's pretty cool. So is, is that still something you do now, a lot of reading? I read a lot of poetry, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, so what's stuff that you got going on right now, like artistically? like? Yeah, I'm doing a lot of things, actually. So besides being a mom, mm -hmm. and I... That's a, that's a big one. Yeah. yeah. So I'm a mom. Um, I just started working at EPCC um, mm -hmm. as a writing tutor. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's really amazing. Really quick, how's that going? Like, how um, is... it's amazing. Um, I get to read through students' essays and help them find their voice, and I read some poetry as well. And it's uh, yeah, I come alive when I do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how how does a writer find their voice? How do they find their voice? Mm -hmm. How do you how do you help them, How how do you help guide them through that process for them to be like 
this is genuinely who I am in my writing. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I could tell when when they're trying to be too fancy. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I always tell them sometimes simpler is better because they're... I get texts from people like that sometimes. I'm like, you don't talk like this. You don't talk like that, right? right? Or, it just, you yeah, pick it up. Yeah, I'm so like, you really have to know the student to know that's not... I, it's weird, not necessarily, because we mm. help them in many different ways, sometimes virtually, sometimes they just email it, and sometimes they do come into the center. So it's like a challenge yeah. when they email it, because you don't know who they are. You, sometimes they don't even like attach the assignment. So it's just the essay, and you have to guess, oh shit, like what do they have to write about? What's the format? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And But even then I could tell, like I don't know, this doesn't really sound like the student or authentic yeah mm -hmm. and then if there's i'm i'm very like keen on emotion even in essays even yeah. if it's for academic essay, right? yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and so if there's like no emotion or maybe like throw in a personal nugget in there you know i think it's yeah. boring <laughs> it is does that transition to regular human interactions like when you talk to somebody do you feel like they're not being authentic like do you feel like you have a pretty good read on it or yeah like i can tell um who's who wants to open up and who doesn't mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay yeah and then so what what else do you have going on like um because yeah. you seem so active in the art community i try to be yeah so um like I said, so besides being a mom and now I'm, I have this job, I'm working on my first um, full book of poems, like a manuscript to mm -hmm. turn in and hopefully get selected. So I don't know why I have a feeling that I'm going to. <laughs> oh, nice. I have this mm -hmm. feeling, but honestly, if I don't, like, I'm going to publish it anyway. Mm -hmm. So So what is this uh, poems about? Um. So so, so, okay, so after I left Christianity, I started to write the way that I've always written and also do art. So, like, my writing for a long time wasn't authentic anymore. It was trying to cater to, like, the Christian world, the, you know, the terms that they would use. And even in art, it was, like, Christian art and stuff. And that wasn't me. So when I left that... I started to go back to being like edgy and just myself. And so these poems are like an expression of of what's always been inside of me that I've wanted to say. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like I found my voice again because when I when I joined that religion, I stopped doing poetry readings, I stopped doing the stuff that I love and like it's a, it's so heartbreaking to me. I feel like I lost a lot of years that I could I could already be like further in my art than I am now. But I mean, I'm I'm glad I went through that because I came out of it stronger and mm -hmm. I feel like I can help people who have been trapped in maybe religion and I'm I'm just more authentic. Like every heartache and pain has made me more empathetic, emotional. Mm -hmm. like easy to talk to like i can just relate you know no yeah i think that's a very good thing to have you know because yeah. i think a lot of people are looking to transition and getting out of their religion yeah you know and it's cool that you can help that you know mm -hmm. especially if you do those kind of shows that you've been doing <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i just i want people to be themselves around me like i'm a safe space for people to talk about anything and i won't judge and i don't that's good because like I've been through some shit. You know? mm -hmm. Um, so I am working on on that, and um, that's cool. Okay. It's for um Flower Song Press. They're looking for a Chicana poet, a guy or girl, to mm. submit a manuscript of poetry, and You're like that's me. Like, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> and so they're gonna pick like however many people submit. They're gonna read through it and pick. And if you're picked, like you're. It gets published. Mm -hmm. and oh, amazing. I know, right? Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. That's the luck. I'm excited for you. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, I'm excited. So, like I said, even if I don't get picked, like, I'm still working on these poems and they're going to get published either way. But it'll be so dope if, you know, I, I win this this first series that they're doing of, of Chicano, Chicano Voices. 
if you do get selected, which you will, <laughs> um, we'll do another episode and we can go yeah. over that book. Yeah, for That'd sure. That'd be really cool. Even if I don't, like... We'll still I go through it and self We got it. it. We got it. Mm. Yeah, so I'm doing that. And then while I'm doing that, I'm working on... Um, it's called Grief and Rebirth. And it's my next solo... It's a solo art show. Mm -hmm. With Orange Brick, it, there was other artists. But this is my first solo. It's going to be next wow, year. Wow, congrats. That's a huge step like, yeah. in an art career. Yeah, e even show. Burying Ghosts was like huge. It was mm -hmm. a huge installation that I did. And so um, I, I want to keep going with that no matter mm -hmm. how I feel. So as I was telling you, after Burying Ghosts, I went through a postpartum depression with art. And mm -hmm. I went through like a really weird, a weird time after the show closed. Why? What, what happened? What made you... I think I relate it to when I got postpartum depression with my daughter. So like I I I grew her inside of me, right? I I, I you know love this baby inside of me, and then when she was born, like she had to be transferred to the hospital and in that in the newborn uh, ICU unit the NICU. and the NICU, and and I got postpartum depression, and so I kind of relate it to that. So like. I birthed Bearing Ghost and I created it and then it's gone. Like now, mm. you know what I mean? And and so I went through like a depression and and all of like my ghosts that I thought I buried like came flooding back and I thought, oh fuck, I'm a fraud. <laughs> like I really didn't bury my ghosts and so I was beating myself up over it. And but now that I'm getting out of it, I realize that I did, I did bury them. I'm just like grief has no expiration date. Like I had this expectation that after the show, I was like going to be healed. I was going to be good. You know what I mean? And, and things fell apart. You know, they had to uh, increase my meds, like my, how, my chronic pain that I deal with got worse. It just like everything fell apart, you know, after burying ghosts and I stopped doing readings. Not because like I was going to stop forever, but I just kind of hid. I wanted to hide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and so you're, you're speaking in past tense. So you're out of that. I'm, now? yeah, I'm slowly feeling like myself again. I'm getting out of that and I'm doing art to, um, it's like a part two. It's a reflection of what I buried. Like, what does it feel like after you bury your ghost? What does it feel like after everybody leaves the burial and it's just the widow? You know, like everything, like life goes on, right? For everybody else. But for the person that's mourning, like it's still real. And I realize that's beautiful because it means I did bury my ghost and now I get to mourn them. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's a crazy experience to go <laughs> yeah. through, you know? Yeah, and you know what's even but crazier? What? So, so the art that I'm doing, I'm going back to paper on paper, mm. which is really interesting. So it's like I'm going back to my roots. So I'm cutting out old children's books from Savers, mm -hmm. and I'm doing collaging like this. Not, not like messy and no meaning. But it's like that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. I'm just going with it. You know, to be honest, I don't know where it's going. What, mm -hmm. But I'm just following, like, what my heart's doing, what my body's doing, what I feel I should be doing. And it's it's interesting what's coming out of it. Yeah. Sometimes I always, like, the more I talk to artists, it seems like there's always this pattern of, like, trying to in tune with what we were doing as like kids, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And and me personally, I see it as like, when we were small, we developed these coping mechanisms that mm -hmm. are like, this is how I'm gonna express myself. It feels good, it feels healthy. Yeah. We get lost and then we go back to it mm -hmm. and we feel like, why did I stop doing this? Yeah. You know? So is that kind of how you feel with like? 
I don't know, like even when I was in Christianity, I never stopped writing and I never stopped doing collaging, even though it sucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I never stopped. So even wow. in that shitty period, mm -hmm. I still collaged and I still wrote poetry. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't know if it's going back to something I gave up. You, because you were consistent I out. never really did. Mm -hmm. I, I think... I guess your, your style has just evolved. So. Yeah, it's just evolving and... I feel, I feel like, so it's interesting because these are, this is grief, right? Even mm -hmm. though like, you know, I don't really remember what it means. It, there's still like grief, I feel like in between. And so if I'm going through grief, I'm going to go back to how I express grief. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like with burying ghosts, I didn't feel I was grieving. I felt like set free like it's very it's a very mm -hmm. different kind of. yeah like that's so different like you don't see grief you see like oh she's releasing you see something like i don't know like mm -hmm. i'm coming alive and like this feels more grief to me and so it's like dang like i'm really experiencing a grief because i'm i'm letting a lot of things go and even after burying ghosts you know i wrote about my brother i wrote about my dad i wrote about my ex mm -hmm. and i literally had to let go of those people mm -hmm. and so so my new show is the grief like of that because mm -hmm. these these people just cause more harm than good to me and sometimes you have to even walk away from family you know yes um and so it's just interesting that that happened right after Barry goes. Like, I feel like maybe everything fell apart to, for the rebirth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think sometimes we get caught up thinking that progress is like a straight up mountain and we just climb it. Mm -hmm. But we forget like to get to the other mountain, you're gonna have to go down from that one. And yeah, you start at the up. bottom like yeah. all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We think like it's just all uphill from here, but yeah, it's, it's not like success or mm -hmm. any event like ventures you go out in. That's just part of the process, right? Yeah. So yeah, I've just I've all I've always been creating either poetry or or collage, and now I've dabbled into my favorite musical instrument, which is the theremin, and that's just an another addition to my weirdness <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's good to find different ways to be expressive yeah you know so, and so what made you pick that instrument mm -hmm. over so um so i don't know if you know this but i i went to college i got my bachelor's in creative writing and one of the electives i chose was um i think like history on instruments and so when we came to the electronic section of the class um, they talked about the theremin, and so it's one of the oldest electronic instruments that you play without touching. And like a Russian scientist dude spy invented it in oh. 1919 <laughs> by yeah. accident. And so um, in class, we we heard like you know um, recordings of of all the instruments that we you know were studying. So when the teacher played it, I was like. If my soul had a sound, that would be it. Oh, it's like cool. the most, mm -hmm. I, I don't know what it is. I just have an ear for it. And so ever since then, you know, I've, I've loved that instrument. Like I wrote my final thesis on it and I just like studied it. And, mm -hmm. and so um, last year I, I got <laughs> nice. Yeah. Are they expensive or? Yeah. So, so the one that I got is the least expensive because, I mean, if anyone seen me play it, it looks like a futuristic little like spaceship, you know, and and it's like a modern version of it. But as you like, if you're able to find old like the older versions, they get more expensive. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. That's pretty cool though. Mm hmm. Um, and I've seen you, you played it live, right? I've played it live a couple of times, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do people, what do people say when they see you playing it? Like, do they, do you get a reaction from it? Yeah, I, I think, what did somebody say? That, um, that it soothed them, which mm -hmm. is interesting because it's not a soothing instrument. It's like very high pitch. And I mean, they used it in 
um those scary movies like in the 20s the yeah, yeah like twilight zone and then and then like as time went on the beach boys used it for their song and stuff like that and and so um yeah so when that person said it's very soothing and peaceful it's like i'm glad he said that because you know like some people think it's just like noise like annoying noise and, <laughs> i mean it can be like when you play the the classic it's like that it's just like mm -hmm. yeah well, i can't even reach those notes but yeah yeah and so with the one that i have it has presets so it has different tunes and then i just play it and it's a very difficult instrument to play like i said like you don't touch it and mm -hmm. so i feel my way through it mm -hmm. will you be playing that instrument on your new coming show yes I, mm -hmm, I will okay play. and you yeah. said you're also gonna be doing some poetry as yeah well. the saturday so it's friday saturday january 21st and 2nd at through the looking glass and friday i want to play it and then mm -hmm. saturday there's going to be a poetry reading that i set up with the different poets and I'll be the featured one and I wanted to do a reading because as I was doing my collaging I realized I had written pieces for them and that was an accident mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought let me just let me read you know mm -hmm. I, I want to incorporate everything that I love doing and that I'm good at and I really want to play the theremin more live and get exposure for that really beautiful instrument that's really unique you know mm -hmm. and um i think the biggest compliment i got when i played the theremin was um someone said that that not anybody can play that you know and mm -hmm. that that's my instrument yeah i don't, I don't even so you just self-taught or like yeah yeah I, I mean i took a class to learn how to calibrate it mm -hmm. and that was it so wow. that that's basically how you tune it mm -hmm. and the theremin's tricky because if somebody walks by me and I'm playing, like it will spaz out. Oh, so someone was good. got real close to me and was taking a picture and it kind of stopped working. You know, oh, like it's good. very sensitive and I need a lot of space and it it feels people's vibrations and even like the atmosphere of the room. Like maybe one room it will play differently. Than in another room. That's pretty cool. That's very interesting. It's a very interesting instrument. Uh -huh. yeah. That's that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, you've mentioned how you've been at Orange Brick and um, through the Looking Glass for mm -hmm. shows and stuff. Yeah, I think um, three of the community shows I was involved with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, like, what what do you think about the the artistic scene in El Paso? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of my first time with the art people and I feel like I'm I'm connecting more with unknown artists than the big artists that get a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like I don't I could be wrong, like I apologize if they're watching this. <laughs> but I feel like they're not approachable. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know why I feel that way, mm -hmm. but I, I like underdogs, I guess. And so I'm connecting with just kind of ordinary people and it's not their day, their like life job. You know, they have, they have kids or they have school or, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So you're feeling like you are finding artists to connect with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just kind of more of like the more underground kind of scene? I or... guess. I mean, do you think it's underground? I don't know, because you said the top know. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, like the people that get their stuff like downtown on walls and, you know, mm. like, or get, you know, Because I'm, I'm new to the scene and, as well. I'm new, you know so, I mean? so I could be wrong. Maybe you should edit that out. I don't know. <laughs> I need <laughs> well, to do more research. I need to so do they can more be research. Nice and nice. <laughs> I, yeah, or maybe it's just me feeling like, well, I don't know. I, I feel like, have you seen other art like this i mean i know there's other collage artists you know but i feel like collage art doesn't get a lot of attention or you know what i mean like i can't mm. see somebody funding a collage artist or how would a collage artist put this on a wall downtown like how would they like you know what i mean so collage is very interesting Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's a whole different medium it's, and stuff. Yeah, like that. it really is. I'm, I'm not too experienced with collage art. You know what I mean to be able to answer that. Yeah. But 
I mean, it, the work... I guess it's a ther theoretical question, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? To ask myself, because mm -hmm. I'm the collage artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I, it, it is impressive, though, that you have been, you know, displaying this artwork and those galleries are... Yeah, your... I, I don't know why I'm barely starting. I should have done this a long time ago, but I, I guess, like, it's a good time now as any, because now I feel like I'm grounded with... Who I am as a woman, an artist, like a mother, a friend, you know what I mean? Like if I were to have done this in my twenties, I don't, I don't think I would have liked it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm still mm -hmm. finding myself, and so. So, so where was that transitioning phase where you're like, because you've been consistent with art, right? Yeah. And so, what, mm -hmm. what was the thing that was kind of like, I need to be social with this? What, what was that I driving? I think. Um, I think right after like COVID when when things were opening up and there was like a demand for artists and mm -hmm. and like readings started to open up I I did it because I think I was so like stuck and in, in, in that you know what I mean that COVID period that that I think that pushed me to do it yeah I think um there's been a lot of growth in the art community mm -hmm. and I feel part of that does have to do with COVID us being locked up and finally being able to come out mm -hmm. we want to like be out and doing social right. things you know and and during COVID like I use that time to like self-reflect like I always do and mm -hmm. I just I do a lot of that stuff daily like a, a lot of people mm -hmm. ask me like don't you get tired out or burned out like doing that all the time and it fuels me honestly mm -hmm. like, nope. <laughs> no, i'm like nope i'm like i'm like this 24 7. i'm just so passionate and i have a vision and a drive and and i just do it you know mm -hmm. and and i embrace pain and stuff like that and i deal with my shit. you know i don't i don't like to hide it anymore and so yeah during covid i i think i i was ready after um like everything kind of opened up again, I, I felt ready to show myself. Mm -hmm. And you did, and you did. And I did, and you know, I had my cover-ups, and I felt, you know, like, mm -hmm. you, you, when you have your cover-ups and you're your, you're your person now, like, I felt like I could show my face, you know? Like, I, I just felt really ashamed of my past and really lost, you know, and then my divorce and just all that stuff and mm -hmm. still struggling with motherhood. It was like rocky, you know, it was really hard. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like I finally come to my own. Yeah, you're, awesome. you seem very comfortable and confident. Now, yeah, like what you're doing. Yeah, I'm very it's comfortable with myself and I know myself now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to an artist that isn't like that? who isn't comfortable and is hiding and hiding. is scared to yeah. integrate into the art community? Honestly, I would like tell them to acknowledge that. Like don't push that down. Acknowledge their fear and that they are hiding, you know, and like keep working on themselves to get out there. Cause I, I feel like, like people think that hiding is a bad thing, but sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes you need it, right? Yeah. Right. Cause if you don't, feel ready to go out and you go out it's not going to be your authentic self you're you're going to be operating through hurt and not you know what i mean a place of like centeredness mm -hmm. and and so wow I'm, i think that's really yeah i'm yeah. kind of glad i, Wish hid. I heard that <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad i kind of hid because i wouldn't be expressing fully who i am and confidently i'd mm -hmm. be operating on like um a fake Cassie, mm -hmm. the real me. A broken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a like broken, centered Cassie. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think that's a big thing, you know, <laughs> your, your imperfections. Oh yeah, uh, I'm very broken, but. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? Okay. <laughs> you poured like some whiskey and like. I know, right? Yeah. And I tape. <laughs> but um, okay. So I I want to ask, what what was your first show? Uh, art or poetry? We could do both. So poetry, I read, I turned, I think, 15. And mm. I did my first reading. Where at? Or... It was called the Bridge Center. Mm -hmm. And it's not there anymore. But um, I was part of a, like a summer um, program that 
my my mom saw and she signed me up for it and it had like different things you could choose from it, it could be like percussion photography um i think painting and then one of them was poetry and it was so hard for me to choose you know because I, I like all that stuff mm -hmm. and so i did poetry and that's when i met um isella and she became my my uh, community college teacher and mentor and friend but uh, she's the one that taught the the class and, and it turned out only two people me and another guy signed up and and they wanted to i guess you know cancel it because only two kids you know um signed up for it and she said no that she would still teach it mm -hmm. and so it was really cool so after that, that cool. program was over we got to read the poems that we worked on and that was my first time and oh man like did that influence you to oh to start reading oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. i've been doing this stuff for a long time mm -hmm. but i mean also yeah. did, did it influence you to be like i want to help people write too i think i've always yeah i wanted to help people write and after i graduated you know from college i i, I moved away for a little bit and then i came back and and so uh, I, I got a job at the art museum at the gift shop that was really cool mm -hmm. and then you know covid happened so i freaked out and thought oh shit i'm never gonna land like my dream job and then voila you know i'm a writing tutor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow that's awesome I know, a lot of so accomplishments cool. a you lot. got a lot of momentum going. i do i have a lot of victories and a lot of like oh not so much but what while i'm talking to you you know those are victories too mm -hmm. So, you got this momentum. What What's your, like, future goals? Like, where, where do you see yourself taking this? Yeah. So, I, like, I see myself being published and, and having books. So, that's something that I've been wanting to do, and I'm finally doing it. I think that, so I've always written in journals. I'm just old school. And, and it was weird. When I was typing them up, I didn't like how they looked on a computer. Because I'm so used to handwriting them and on paper and with a pen, you know? And so I had to really get over that recently. And now I don't like writing it in here. I was like, oh, like I keep going back and forth. <laughs> I'm like, oh. And so now, like, I love seeing it typed out. And so that's driving me to just do it. Like, to, mm -hmm. to type these up and get them out there. So I, mm -hmm. So that's definitely one of them. Um, with my art, just keep doing shows, you know, like, um, believe it or not, I have not sold one painting ever in my life. And, mm -hmm. and so, I mean, if I, if people start buying my stuff, awesome. And if they don't, that's okay too. Like, I know it sounds strange, but like, I'm not in it for that. I, I just want people to see my art and feel something and. I just Indian want, experience. yeah, I want that exposure and like with collages, I get my collages. Like it's so strange. I, I just, I do collaging and sometimes somebody comes to my mind and I give it to them. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's collaging is like a beautiful gift to give. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my collages are given away mm -hmm. and people are like, that's dumb. It's like, well, it's not your life, bro. I know, <laughs> I, I, I know I'm barely new. I barely worked on like two collages like last week. Yeah. Um, cause I was doing a collab with De Las Estrellas. Mm -hmm. But I know also, um, Young Briz. Yeah. He also does collages as well. Yeah. And I, I think, love his stuff. And, I, and I've been seeing you three make collages. It really got me into it. Like, whoa, that's a really cool art, you know, of like cutting stuff and just it's so expressive it yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even digitally for me like doing it on the computer I do has been very yeah. like wow this is very mm -hmm. this is pretty cool i did I it on my video. phone for a longest time when i was like a new mom and i was breastfeeding my daughter and like 3 a.m you know like my hands are full i couldn't i couldn't write or collage so i ended up doing it on my phone digitally and i would write a lot of my poems and the notes on the phone Mm -hmm. So, like, even through that, I still wrote in collage. Like, it's my life, you know? It's it's my my theme. So, do you have a lot of um, art pieces that have poems that go with them? Um, do I? No, the, this show is, it has that. Uh, yeah, okay. that's something new. 
So that's something mm -hmm. to look out for. Yeah. You can go to the shelf. Mm -hmm. I think the journal from Burying Ghosts was kind of similar. It was kind of mm -hmm. like that. But I've never had like a poem go with the art piece. So that's something new that I'm dabbling in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And then now I want to talk about your, your uh, creative process because you're so consistent. How do you maintain that consistency? Because a lot of people hit like, you know, dry spills. Yeah. So um, a lot of people don't believe me, but I don't get writer's block. I don't, I don't, I, I always have something to, to like say. Mm -hmm. And, and so um, I just do it. Like I, it's a hard question to answer. Cause like I said, it's, it just comes so naturally to you. It's like breathing. Like I just mm -hmm. do it. I don't even think about it. And it's not like, I'm sure a lot of artists are jealous hearing this right now. Like, it's so weird. <laughs> like, to, like when I hear that, that's strange to me. Cause it's like, um, it, I don't see it as like, I have to discipline myself or it, it's not a discipline. It's not work. It's, it's my passion, my life. And I've done it my whole life. Wow. That's impressive, yeah. and I'm jealous. <laughs> That's pretty cool, though. But I mean, with with writing, with poetry, I just, I ha I'm, I have a unique way of seeing the world, and I connect things, and everything to me is poetry. Like your hat's poetry to me, and I could write about it probably, mm -hmm. you know, in like five minutes. And so, um, I just find things, and and it comes to me, and I also use like my past and my family to write as well. I, I use every experience that happens to write. And, you know, I take advantage of the dreams that I have, or sometimes I wake up and I have a phrase and I write it. Mm. So do you just have a collection of these that you like plug in later to your... I have a shitload of writings, too, oh, like wow. a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So you also write about your dreams? Mm -hmm. Wow. So like... Um, do you just describe what happened or does it you make it into a story or yeah i i just write it poetically but i pretty much describe like what happened or yeah the one i'm gonna read the short one is is about it's not about a dream like a dream spoke to me i didn't have a dream about it the dream told me something like i heard it and then i wrote about it that's pretty did you feel like you wanted to talk about anything else? Like any other events you got coming up? Um, or? That's all I have like for now as for events, like for poetry, just kind of if like people follow me, La Poeta 915, I always post, you know, a reading or something. So okay. uh, yeah, since I'm getting out of my funk depression, I'm, I'm ready like to, to be out again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I got another question. Okay. Um, so, if if somebody's looking for you to like, um, do you do freelancing work or? Um, no one's ever asked me, but I'm down. Yeah, if if somebody wants me to do a collage or I'm, I'm into shadow boxes lately. What's that shadow box? So it's like those boxes that you can put memorabilia in, or you could put anything really, and it, it's just like a box, you know? And so I've been finding those as well mm. at secondhand stores and I collage on them and put objects, like things like that. Oh, okay. It was in the, in the yeah. Buried Ghost. It was, mm -hmm. there was a Nirvana. I didn't know there was a name for them. They're like, called Shadow Boxes. That's pretty cool. I like the name for that. I do too. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm bringing those back in my next show. And it's interesting because it's kind of like I'm boxing away things mm -hmm. in these boxes. Oh, yeah. So I'm using those to collage and put objects as well. So I can do those. I can do collaging. Um, yeah. But with collaging, it, it's going to be hard because it's not like as painter, you're going to be like, hey, can you paint me a flower? And then it's a flower. Like with a collage, you have to give me room to make you a collage that you don't know what the hell it's going to be. So that's a little tricky kind of because industry. exactly because let's say I collage and I give it to them and they don't like it. It's like, ooh. Mm. I mean, well, that sometimes <laughs> happens with commissions as well. That does not look like my grandma. <laughs> so yeah. it does happen. All right. So 
You brought some poetry for us? I did. I brought my whole book. <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole book, sorry. So what, what, um, what poem will you be reading? I'm going to read the one that I mentioned about a dream telling me a certain thing. And then I want to read my um, newest one. It's my longest piece that I'm really proud of. And I haven't read it at any open mic, so this is the first time anybody's gonna hear it. How awesome, how yeah. exciting. Yeah, and I actually spent four days writing this poem, and I've never spent that much time oh, on wow. a poem. So this one's special. It's very special. I really, nice. I worked on it. First time a poem has been read on this <laughs> podcast. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us. This is um, La Poeta. Mm -hmm. um, Cassie HP. At CHP. You can find her on our social medias, which mm -hmm. are uh, La Poeta915. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. do you have any other social media platforms? That's it. That's it? Mm -hmm. All right, so find her on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. We're going to close things off with a finishing poem Ode to My Black Child. One, my undeveloped reproductive tongue spoke from the birth canal of my mouth long before African soil found its way to me. I proclaimed to my mother I wanted a child with rich melanin found in the birthplace pigments of mankind. Two, years later a name appeared Within seconds of waking, a shooting star, a fleeting flash of yellow light, a tiny speck of space debris entered the atmosphere of my room, traveling at the speed of fire and disappeared. Three, December night at my mother's house, there was a 35% chance of getting pregnant by pulling out on the fabric of the bed. My womb activated after months of bleeding and swelling, trying to control birth. My fallopian tubes decided to welcome our September baby. Four, it was a Thursday morning I gripped the edge of the bathtub as I saw two lines. My intestines tied into a noose. I wanted to die from panic. I wasn't ready to be a mother, but my breasts were already growing into full moons, into hard rocks creating liquid gold. I was nauseous. All I wanted was a Happy Meal, four-piece chicken nuggets. Five, I was a prophet who forgot the name that came from the sky. I forgot the words I spoke as a child. I forgot when I gazed at dark skin, I saw rare pearls and each strand of tiny hair led me up a spiral staircase into a ballroom. I forgot I saw color and smiled at beautiful faces. Six, until my surprise toy from McDonald's was a black Barbie. I held the doll smiling at me with her hand raised in the air with Afro magic. She had a pink shirt and blue pants. I began to cry and speak to my belly. Love came into my entire body. Then I remembered. Seven, I saw visions in the night through the blinds of my window. My black child was an alchemist, changing leaves into superhero silhouettes. She shape-shifted with the branches into the flash running, Superman with one hand in the air. 
She had a guitar. Other nights held a torch like the Statue of Liberty. Eight, I decorated the walls with scripture. I painted prophetic declarations of victory. I danced with silk dyed flags. I wrote my hopes, fears, and prayers. I filled the months with plan A, but never prepared for plan B. Nine, my black child came into the world in my room of blue pearl, swallowing sticky, thick meconium. My midwife laid her on my chest and I felt the weight and length of her limp body. She had no cry, no breath. I wasn't aware of the sirens coming to get her. 10. At home, my breasts engorged. She was replaced by suction cups. In the day and night hours till morning, my body was yearning for her mouth to release the pain but she was hooked up to tubes and wires. She cried in someone else's arms. She slept with loud beeping noises. She was given a bath by a stranger. My grief made me stay for only an hour visit. 11, my black child returned to me and lived in the space between my breasts. She drank deep of the rock split open. She swam past the tears of postpartum. She lived in the arms of love and anxiety. She smiled every time she saw me. My black child, my only child I'll ever have grew fast and joyful while I mourned for seven days and three years. I forgot the words again. I forgot to look up at the heavens. I forgot the name I carried inside. 12, until I learned to care for my black child's coils and curls anointed with tangerine and coconut oil. Ancient fossils detangled through my fingers. Her hair grows upward and spreads out like a sunflower. It's a beautifully constructed nest. When I bathe her, she becomes a healing plant to my soul. 13. I look at my black child and see she stands in the Mexican side of my eyes, in the body of Ghana. She's part of the colored lines and just beyond the edge to the other side. All my black child lives in the healed parts of me and in the parts I forget and keep on remembering. <laughs> You nervous? Yes. <laughs> Me too, so we'll do this together. We'll okay. get through it. If we, if we have bloopers or whatnot, we'll, we'll edit them out. We should keep all this. <laughs> like, have you ever seen, um, is it like a Rush Hour or Bugs Life? Mm -hmm. Remember at the bloopers yeah. at the end? Yeah, we'll yeah. just have a bunch of those. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah. let me start the intro. Okay. Do you know my phone? La Poeta? <laughs> you mean Cassie? But, um, Cassie HP. Cassie HP, so that's yeah. what you go by? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I'm trying to think if I got any other questions for you. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty good. Let me see how much time we went into. An hour mark? Wow. Well, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, don't worry, I'll edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry, a painter you can you can um help. Uh, we're getting bloopers. <laughs> bloopers. Uh -huh. Um. Oh, where we reach out to a painter. But no, that's that's mm -hmm. that's awesome. How much stuff you have going on? 
I think we touched base with everything. I just need to work on I really realized, I was like, I didn't work on uh, how to end it. <laughs> Say, you can tell me to read. Mm -hmm. or... We can go into your poetry, the finished one. Okay, that sounds good. So... All right. And then let's cut and get over and record the, <laughs> the poetry. Okay.